Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. I've got a whole bunch of coins and I want to sort them out. So today let's make a coin sorter. Today we're going to be working with one of my least favorite products. Uh, plexiglass or uh, whatever this particular piece is. It's a scrap that's been around my house for probably a decade or so. And I've moved a few times with it. Figuring, oh, I'll always have some particular use for it. Uh, and this was the use. Now, normally I would do something like uh, like quarter inch wood or quarter inch plywood, but I want a nice sharp edge. And so for that plexiglass works really well. Problem is the quarter inch is a pain to work with. It shatters easily. It's hard to cut. And so I thought I'd snap it like I would with others. Uh, some of the thinner ones, you can just strike both sides and snap it. This one takes a lot more force. And it never quite gave me a really clean edge. So a lot of them I had to come back through and clean them up a little bit with a rasp. It would have been a lot easier if I was using something like eighth inch, um, but this is all I had on hand. And so quarter inch it is. <laughs> and we're having some fun. I was just experimenting, playing with it and trying it. I need three squares that are the same size. You can see one of these has a good chip out on it, but uh, this is all an experiment as are a lot of things. And I wanted to try new things and try different methods. I want them all to be exactly the same. And so I needed to square them up a little bit. Now we're going to be drilling a whole bunch of holes in this. Originally I was just planning on using an auger bit, which works great other than the fact that it has that snail on the end that will um, will not want to catch in the plexiglass. And it will probably just split it out because it ends up being a very big wedge. So I have this on here to initially make it and uh, yeah, that's uh, not going to make it anymore. So we're going to do some more testing. And I've got an extra piece here I was just using for scraps and uh, it allows me to try other things. So let's try making the hole a little bit bigger. And uh, uh, that kind of works and kind of doesn't. And so I'm going back and forth and trying different bits. For the project, I'm going to need three different hole sizes. And each one of these holes need to be in between the sizes of, of the change so that they fall through when they're smaller, but they don't fall through when they're bigger. I found that the Wood Owl three blades actually work really, really well, as long as I ran them at high speed so that they more or less melted the plastic. I also need to make sure that the auger hole was big enough so that they wouldn't uh, split it out. And those worked really, really well. And you can see how the coins will fall through if they're too small, but if they're too big, they'll sit on there. And this one will stop the quarters, but everything else will fall through. But the quarter, no, that doesn't. And for the first two hole sizes, I actually used the wood owl bits. They worked out really, really well. The problem is for the last one to differentiate the penny and the dime, the quarter is an easy one. That sorts out really well. So the nickel falls through this one, but it won't fall through this one. So that one's good on the nickel, and of course that. And then we come down here, the penny should easily fall through that, and the dime should easily fall through that. And the dime should also fall through this one, but the penny shouldn't fall through this one. And it kind of doesn't, but the recess is in there. It's just really, really close. So I want something slightly smaller than that. So this one is 7 8 This is 3 16 This one's 3 quarter. I want something slightly smaller than 3 quarter, but going a whole 16th inch down to an 11 16 is too small. Now the penny, uh, now even the dime won't fit through that hole. So I need to find a bit in between those two. So the perfect would be to get like a 19 or an 18 and a half millimeter. Um, but yeah, I'd have to buy that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab this one. This is a three quarter and I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and see if we can adapt that. I, I know a lot of people are gonna kind of cringe at this, but honestly, I have a whole bunch of these left over and I just wanna see if this would actually work. And I love actually experimenting and trying new things and just seeing what is out there. And these spurs on these are bent out just a little bit, so they make a hole slightly bigger than the shaft. So if I crush it in, th theoretically it should. And this made it slightly smaller than three quarter, uh, but it wasn't quite what I wanted. It was, it was close. So I made that bit about as small as it can go, and it's really, really close. I mean, the penny just sits there, but if it's in just the right orientation, it falls through. So um, it's ever so slightly better than that one. But I think I'm going to have to go buy a 19 millimeter and try that because I don't have a 19 millimeter in stock. So, um, yeah, we're having all sorts of issues. And I decided off camera just to do a bunch of experiments because uh, when it comes to plexiglass, uh, yeah, it does shatter. So you want to be careful with it. So I tried a bunch of things that work. And for the three quarter and the 13 sixteenths, uh, those, um, these bits actually work really well as long as you pre-drill them. So I actually pre-drill with a quarter inch. And then I can come in with this and it cleans it out and I get these really nice clean sharp holes that I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely loving. The problem is to separate the pennies and the dimes, they're really close in diameter and I need an 18 and a half millimeter bit. The 18 
generally works as long as you don't wiggle it too much. And the 19 generally works as long as you don't wiggle it too much. Um, I found the 19 to be a little bit closer than the 18. Um, so I ended up drilling all of mine with just a simple high speed twist 19 millimeter and it works. Um, you just have to be very, very careful with it because if you let it catch, it can chip the whole thing out. So you have to take it very, very slowly, almost no pressure at all on it and just take it very, very slowly. Um, I didn't pre-drill anything with these. I just let it go, um, but just don't let it work out and it actually works really well. I prefer this though. This gives me a little bit cleaner hole and gives me more precise. If I could find these in an 18 and a half millimeter bit, I could make these all day long. But uh, yeah, so let's get back to it and drill the rest of the holes. So far we haven't actually gotten to any woodworking and uh, that is because this is the boring part. Yes, we we're gonna be drilling lots of holes. I ended up drilling, uh, I don't know, something like 20 or 30 in each plate. Uh, and these plates are a size by a size. I don't really care what the size is. I was just kind of experimenting with cutting something that fit. And so they're around seven inches by seven right inches. And uh, I just fit in as many holes as I could. I tried to keep the, the holes a little bit far away from each other so they didn't run into each other and I didn't have any problems. Um, on some of them, I ended up with a little bit of a, uh, a heated burr. And so I came back in with a bevel and that just cleaned up that edge a little bit to deburr them. <laughs> Speaking of burrs, I've heard a lot of people say I, I look like Bill Burr. I don't see it, but okay. <laughs> now we need to actually start working on the woodworking. We're going to work with some trim. And for this, I have stock that's about inch and a half by three quarter inch. And this is going to be a rim that goes around each of these trays. And I need to create a rabbit in the top and bottom of it so they fit into each other as well as a groove in the bottom to then hold the plexiglass tray. So for the groove, I'm going to use a Stanley 50. And this is my, my go-to groover. For one of the rabbits, I'm going to use my Stanley 45. And for the other rabbit, I'm going to use the Stanley 55. Why am I using all of these? Because I have them and because I can. And the profile for this, you'll see it in the end, but it's going to have one small lip on the top that then fits into a slot on the bottom. And then a groove on each of them to hold on to the plexiglass. So I'm going to measure out one of these that is the length of a side of the plexiglass plus a little bit more so that it will wrap around and each side is going to have a butt joint connecting them. So each of these sticks is a little bit less than a half inch longer than the side of plexiglass. So if the side of plexiglass is seven inches, then these would be seven and a little less than a half. Uh, I'm not being very particular about that. I just want it to fit inside of it. And I'm gonna mark off the uh, ends of all of these to match up. Uh, I'm going to need four of these per plate, and we need three plates, so I need 12 of these all together. And then I'm going to wedge them up in the vise and put them together so that they are square to the top and square to each other. And then I'm going to bore a quarter inch hole down through the first one and into the second. We're just going to do a floating tenon, or in this case, just a dovetail. And if I use the square to make sure that the one going down into the vise is square with the top of the bench, then when I put the other one on up against the stop, it actually locks it in place and I can drill those out really, really quickly. To do the connection, I'm just gonna use a quarter inch oak dowel and epoxy them in place. Um, if I wasn't doing this for a video and I'm not needing to get it out today, I probably would use something other than five minute epoxy. Uh, wood glue would be perfectly fine for this, uh, but because I, I wanna get the video done, uh, five minute epoxy is often what I grab for this. And for dumb things like this where I'm experimenting and playing with things, five minute epoxy is perfect. So we're gonna drive a dowel down through that and schmear on as much epoxy as we can. All, th all three of these plates um, then have to make sure you put in the plexiglass before putting on the last uh, rod. Don't ask me how I know that. Uh, one of them, I, I completely attached them together and then tried to pull it apart and ended up actually breaking um, the, the, the dowel holding it together. Then, uh, oops. Yeah, so make sure you fit the plexiglass in before attaching them all together. Drive down in the last dowels, uh, let it sit. I do put a couple clamps on it, not for clamping force, uh, but just to pull the joints a little bit tighter. Uh, with epoxy, you don't need clamping joints, uh, clamping force, but uh, with wood glue, you do want clamping force in there. So if you're using wood glue, uh, make sure you clamp it out nicely. So we can let that sit and then come back a little bit later and pull it apart. And it's actually a really quick little project to make. Um, I, I I, after doing this first one, I, it makes me want to do another one and just kind of experiment and try with things because it was a little bit different to, to play with it.
Also, you do want to make sure that they are perfectly square. We want them to match. So I'm going to check all the edges and, uh, and put them through. I have a clamp going corner to corner because that one was ever so slightly out uh, because they do need to fit into each other. And so if they're not square, then you're going to have a little bit of problem. We can take the clamps off and then clean it all up. With all the dowels coming through, we can cut those off close to flush, or if you have a flush cut, ca flush cut saw, <laughs> flush cut <ca. laughs> yeah, you can just cut them all down. And then come through and plane them off. And I love planing off the end grain here. Whenever you're doing the end grain, though, make sure you're coming from the end onto the board. We don't want those sticking out. We need to continue the rabbit all the way around so that little bit sticking off, we can come in and cut it down from the side and cut it down from the top. And that little piece then just pops right off. And I've got a little chunk that comes out and we have a rabbit that runs all the way around around the outside of it. This rabbit thing can fit into the other one. You can clean it up with a little bit of the file and it's uh, a really kind of cool how smooth that comes out. Use a chisel and a plane to smooth out all the edges and get everything in here. And again, this is more or less a prototype, so we're, we're, we're okay with other problems. The holes of the grooves come through, we could fill those. There are other things we could do to make this perfect. Uh, but today we're just making it fun. We're having a little experiment and seeing what comes out of it. I found out that the rabbit on the bottom needed to be a little bit deeper um, so that it would actually fit in there the way I wanted it to. Um, I ended up taking one shaving off of each rabbit so that they fit in there um, and slid down in nicely because they ended up being slightly smaller when I actually clamped them all in. One thing to keep in mind, make sure that that rabbit isn't exactly the size it should be. So now let's go in for the test. And in the test here, we're gonna dump in all the chains and shake it around. I quickly realized with this size, you can only do about a handful at a time. It does work, but it takes a lot more for the pennies to work down through all of the quarters and then to do it again and again. But it does work out well. And you see how the dimes come out the bottom. We have pennies in there, a couple dimes that didn't fall through. With a little bit of shaking, they do. And then, of course, the nickels and the quarters, and they do all split out, except for the ones that don't fall through. And it actually sorts them out rather quickly. I was very, very pleased with that, but it works best if you don't completely fill it. Just put a handful in there, and it shakes out rather quickly. Um, is this the most uh, efficient way to sort your coins? No. Uh, is it fun? Yes. Is it a cool project to make? Yes. It is a rather enjoyable thing to make and, and play around with. And it is actually rather surprising how well it works. Uh, there's always one or two coins that don't fall through, but they're easily separated and it, it comes out very, very well. Um, so it is a toy. It is not something I would use for any particular um, business venture, but for the fun of sorting a handful of coins, it is kind of fun. We're going to finish it with BLO and paste wax, of course. Why else? We're going to be using this for wood by right, uh, even though it's not oak. Um, yeah, I know, but uh, we're going to do the BLO and paste wax thing. Put on the paste wax, put on the BLO, let it soak up as much as it wants. And uh, then after it has set for a little while, wipe off the excess and apply some paste wax. Polish that down, and it's a great little hand finish that looks good and, and feels good in the hand. Um, a rel relatively quick project and a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it would be a great gift to make, though. So there you have it. Um, yeah, this is a, a very simple one. You can get some others that are far more complicated that have chutes and slides and different slots that they fall through. And those work really well. Um, these are a little bit more fun in my book. Um, is it the most efficient and perfect way of doing it? No. Um, is it the most fun way? Maybe. Uh, is it functional? Yes, it's actually very functional. And it is much faster than sorting them by hand. Um, so in that case, I rather enjoy these. They're kind of a, a fun, simple thing. You can actually buy... Uh, really cheap ones of these on Amazon out of a pressed piece of plastic that work just as well. But it's kind of fun to try something new and experiment. And I like doing that, trying something very different, something that I've never tried before, and seeing how it comes out. What things can I learn? What things can I do better? Uh, these would work better if they were larger, but I don't want to drill that many holes. So uh, they work fairly well for this. I just uh, have to make sure I do small batches at a time. Problem is the pennies from the dimes. Those are really, really close. Um, and so for that, the best would be an 18 and a half, but the 19 is what I went through and it works out fairly well. Um, I haven't had any pennies fall through the 19 millimeter hole yet, even though it's reamed out ever so slightly larger. Um, then it works out very, very well. I'll leave a link to the bits that I'm using down below. So if you want to get the exact same ones, you can do that. So this is one of those fun projects you can just do when you have a little bit of time in the shop. You want to try something different, experiment and play with it. Um, I, it would be much, much faster if I made these out of plywood on the bottom, but I kind of like the plexiglass and I wanted to learn some things about drilling the holes in the plexiglass. So that works out fairly well. And I, I think it'll work better 
because the, the plywood will kind of wallow out over time and so the, the holes might get a little bit larger. Um, so this works out very well and I like it. If you have any thoughts of things that I could do better, let me know those down in the comments down below. Maybe I'll make another set in the future that are a little bit better. Maybe make them out of aluminum or something like that. Uh, yeah, there's lots of different things you could do. Uh, so if you have any thoughts, comments, ideas, snide remarks, throw those down below. Even if you put down there, comment down below. That does actually help out the channel. So thank you. Um, on that, or hitting the like, the share, subscribing, those things do help the channel grow and they help us get in front of more people. It's a huge thing you can do. So thank you for that. If you like the video, then go ahead and do that. If you want to take it one step farther, then there are a bunch of people scrolling over here. They are the patrons on Patreon. Without patrons or members here on the channel, we wouldn't exist. We have special perks for both where you can see some behind the scenes footage and things of that nature. So if you want to find out more about that, there's links to Patreon in the description down below or you can click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. So thank you for supporting the channel and I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. So I made the bottoms out of plexiglass. Originally I was thinking about doing them out of wood, but eh, in the end I changed my mind.